Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 20th of September. MA Diplomatic Row India issues advisory to its nationals in Canada. India reached Moon hosted G20 summit. Pakistan begging for funds, laments Nawaz Sharif. And Sri Lankan President meets Prime Ministers of Nepal and Bangladesh. And now for all the details, amid a diplomatic standoff between New Delhi and Ottawa, India on Wednesday advised its citizens to exercise utmost caution and remain vigilant in Canada due to deteriorating security environment and spurge in anti-India activities and politically condoned hate crimes. Highlighting the threat calls against Indian diplomats and diaspora members opposing sectionist activities, the Foreign Ministry advised Indian nationals and students to avoid travelling to regions in Canada which have witnessed anti-India activities and protests in the past. The warning came hours after a similar advisory was issued by Ottawa advising Canadian citizens to exercise caution while travelling to India. The development comes the day after both sides expelled each other's senior diplomats following the statement of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau linking India in killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar in Canada. UK, Australia and the US, which are part of the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance with Canada, have also called the allegations as concerning and have said they are monitoring the situation as the investigation is still underway. So what I'm trying to say is that from the so-called five eyes, you know that, eh? the five. That is, from the four eyes, <laughs> Canada did not get as much support as Justin, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau seems to have expected. But let's also understand one thing. For Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, it's a matter of survival because his government is dependent on support from the new democratic party whose leader is Jagmeet Singh who has got a certain point of view in the matter. In fact, all polit Sikh political leaders in Canada, whether they actually support Khalistan or not, they are obliged, quote-unquote, to support Pakistan, uh, Khalistan publicly. India has called the allegations by Trudeau administration as absurd and motivated. New Delhi, which has long raised separatist activities against India by Khalistanis in Canada, has urged Ottawa to act against such anti-Indian elements. The diplomatic talks have also derailed the protracted talks on a potential bilateral trade deal. I think it's unfortunate that Canada chose such a public route. If at all they have an issue, these matters should be discussed privately with a friendly government like India and matters should be discussed behind closed doors. Going public, making a statement in Parliament and so on was very unfortunate by the Prime Minister. And having gone that far, now I think we have really, they have really jeopardized the state of a very good relationship. Meanwhile, a new row erupted in Indian politics on Wednesday after opposition Congress party leader Adhiranjan Chaudhary claimed that key words have been dropped from India's constitution. Copies of the constitution were reportedly distributed in a gift bag handed to MPs on the opening day of the new parliament building. Chaudhary said in the new copy, the words socialist and secular were not there in the preamble. He called it an attack on the constitution. ये सेकुलर और सोशलिस्ट ये दो सब नहीं थे तो मैं ही उसके बाद राहुल जी से बात किया और राहुल जी को भी दिखाया कि देखिए ये संविधान की छेड़छाड़ होना शुरू हो चुके हैं तो किसी ने कहते थे कि ये जब शुरू शुरू हुई थी हमारे संविधान की उस समय की ये भावना है उन्नीस सौ ठीक है हो सकता लेकिन नाइनटीन में अमेंडमेंट हुई थी तो आज अमेंडमेंटेड क्यों नहीं संविधान में मिलेगा Meanwhile, reacting to the charge, Law Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal said when the constitution was drafted, it was like this only, an amendment was made later. This is the original copy, he said. When the Samhidhan was made, it was like this, right? After that, there was a 42nd amendment. So, it will be the original copy, right? This is our question. 
Pakistan's former PM and PMLN Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif on Tuesday showed a mirror to the citizens of his country as he spoke about the ongoing economic crisis. Drawing sharp comparison with India's immense success, Sharif lamented that Pakistan's ex-PM and his brother Shehbaz Sharif is begging money from China and Arab countries while India has reached the moon and also hosted the G20 summit. He claimed that India's economic trajectory changed as it had followed the economic reforms initiated by the government in 1990. Shehbaz had earlier informed that Nawaz is returning back to Pakistan in October end and also stated he would be the next Prime Minister if their party wins the next election. Nawaz Sharif is currently living in self-exile in London after being disqualified in 2017 by the Supreme Court in its verdict in the Panama Papers case. Pakistan enters an election year as former Prime Minister Imran Khan is serving jail for multiple cases and has been barred from politics for five years. Moving on, a South Asia expert raised the issue of enforced disappearances in Pakistan during the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva and urged immediate intervention of the international community. A report. A research analyst from Amsterdam-based think tank FSAS in his intervention during UNHRC session in Geneva on Tuesday highlighted the issue of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Pakistan to muzzle any form of dissent. She said although the UN Working Group has examined 800 cases, the country's Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances has registered more than 8,000, while Pashtun and Baloch groups claim these to be in tens of thousands. Although this UN working group has examined 800 cases in Pakistan, the country's Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances has registered more than 8,000, while Pashtun and Baloch groups claim these to be in tens of thousands. This modus operandi has seemingly evolved, and even the killing of Pakistani dissidents abroad is not an exception anymore. Madam President, the Pakistani people live in an environment of extreme fear, which the military establishment continues to reinforce. The urgent intervention of this council is crucial to... Members of ethnic minorities in Pakistan have long blamed that they have been targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping. The situation is not highlighted by the local media, forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Tuesday held meetings with Prime Ministers of Nepal and Bangladesh Pushp Kamal Dehel and Sheikh Hasina respectively in New York on the sidelines of the 78th UN General Assembly. During the meeting with PM Dehel, Vikrami Singhe stated that Sri Lanka is keen on expand its long-standing ties with Nepal into a dynamic political trade and business partnership. Dehel reiterated the same. Meanwhile, Vikrami Singhe extended his gratitude to PM Hasina for assistance to Sri Lanka during challenging times. Hasina informed Vikrami Singhe that she was pleased with Sri Lanka's speedy recovery from the financial crisis, adding that she had not expected the island nation to pay back so fast the loan that Bangladesh had extended. India's maiden solar mission spacecraft Aditya L1 on Tuesday performed trans Lagrangian Point 1 insertion maneuver, making the spacecraft leave the Earth orbit and commencing a journey towards the Sun. Taking to X, Indian Space Research Organization said the Solar Mission spacecraft is now a trajectory that will take it to the Sun-Earth L1 point. It will be injected into an orbit around L1 through a maneuver after about 110 days. Named after the Hindi word for the Sun, the Aditya L1 was launched on September 2, barely a week after India beat Russia to become the first country to land on the South Pole of the Moon. An inter-district taekwondo championship held in India's Jammu and Kashmir this week witnessed huge participation. The two-day event held at Sheri Kashmir Indoor Sports Complex in Srinagar was organized by Jammu and Kashmir Department of Youth Services and Sports in collaboration with Jammu and Kashmir Sports Council. It aimed to attract youth towards sports and encourage them to stay away from bad activities. Players from nine districts of the Kashmir Valley participated in the championship. Kodo है कोरियन मार्शल आर्ट है और ओलंपिक स्पोर्ट है बहुत अच्छी गेम है और हमारा जो जम्मू कश्मीर का टैलेंट है बहुत ज्यादा है और वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग मेडल्स इन 
upcoming national level. The players showed great enthusiasm and urged that more such events should be organized in future where they can showcase their talent. है सर ये जो टाइकॉन गेम है सर ये बेनिफिट बहुत देती है बच्चों को सर आजकल सर आजकल का जो माहौल है सर आजकल के जो बच्चे हैं वो मतलब ड्रग्स के मतलब लगे हुए हैं सर मैं सब मतलब पेरेंट्स से गुजारिश करना चाहता हूँ कि जितने भी बच्चे हैं सर वो प्लीज़ ना प्लीज़ किसी भी मार्शल आर्ट मैं ये नहीं कहता हूँ टाइकॉन में सर किसी भी सपोर्ट्स में आए बेनीफिट से बहुत है सर हम इन शाला यहाँ से सिलेक्शन होकर पहले स्टेट खेलेंगे स्टेट से जाके नेशनल्स खेलेंगे सर जो नेशनल की सर्टिफिकेट है वो बेनीफिट हमें बहुत देती है या जॉब अगर किसी को जॉब होती है उस मतलब उसके लिए फायदा है और सर हेल्थ के लिए भी है बहुत ठीक है दैट्स ऑल इन टुनाइट सेशन वी विल सी यू सेम टाइम टुमारो गुड नाइट टैग टीवी ब्रिंग्स यू डेली न्यूज बुलेटिन फ्रॉम इंडिया ब्रेकिंग न्यूज एंड व्यूज फ्रॉम इंडिया